Welcome to Q&A practice. We'll start out with the plaintiff attorney. Ready? Here we go. Can we go to the previous page and the call at 1449? It shows in this sector the phone. Yeah, the phone. Yes. Does that suggest movement in your business? Objection. Your honor sustained. Ms. Conrad asked you some questions about connectivity. I mean, calls between these two cell phones, the 9151 T-Mobile phone, the prepaid T-Mobile phone, and Tam's phone, 8634, aside from the contact on April 15th, and then again later in the week on the 18th, did was the principal phone that was subscribed to by Jahar Sarnev, the AT&T phone, the one that communicated with Tam Sarnev? Objection, scope. No, but I'm not sure. The question is clear. Why don't you replay it? I'll ask another question. Mr. Broomer, can you fast forward about four slides? One more, please. So this is the next day, and this time it's not the 9151 phone that was being used, the Jahar Sarni phone that was being used to communicate with Tam Sarnev. It was the AT&T phone. Objection. Overruled. You may answer it. Go ahead. It's the assumption in the question being used to communicate with Tam Sarnev. Right, that's enough. Go ahead. I don't remember how many calls there were, if any, during this time period between 4634 and 5112. And as I remember, the service had been disconnected on the 5112 but kind of a side product. They don't eliminate texting, so the user could still use it for texting, and I believe that's what was, if my memory serves correctly, I believe that's what was being used on the 5112 number at this time period, and that 5112 if it hadn't paid for its service, could also use the wireless signals, the Wi-Fi signals, right? It could connect via Wi-Fi or do the texting even though it would have been shut off. Does Apple have an iMessage communications means? Objection, Your Honor, sustained. That is all I have, Your Honor. Your Honor, I neglected to ask that the phone extraction for Tam's phone be marked for identification, so I would ask that that be marked as Exhibit 3 for identification, and then the AT&T records be marked for identification as Exhibit 4. All right. And I would actually ask that, given the redirect examination, I would ask that the AT&T records for April 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th at least be admitted at this time, or those, excuse me, that were reviewed. Mr. Chakra just asked a series of questions about what those records showed. I would object to that, Your Honor. No, you may have them all marked for identification. May I ask just a couple of questions on redirect, please? Recross, recross, thank you. Only as to that matter. Yes, absolutely. Sir, Mr. Chakra just asked you some questions about being able to make calls wirelessly, correct? Yes. Those wouldn't be reflected on cell tower data, would they? No. Well, and may I just have a moment? 
they would be reflected in the data connection part, but we didn't rely on any of those, right? That's not what you were referring to in these charts, right, right. May I just have one moment, please? Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down, thank you. All right, let's see. That ends that Q&A practice. So we will start some new material. And we will start with defense attorney. Ready? Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna show you what we've marked for identification purposes as defendants exhibits N, O, H, and G. I'm gonna ask you to review those documents, exhibits N, O, H, and G. Take your time, have a look at those. That's how you turn right there, those two turning lanes on the outside lane there. Okay, well, have a look at all the exhibits. Can you explain what those exhibits depict? Now, what was the question again? Yeah, and what do those exhibits depict? What do they show in terms of your, they show I'm, I'm in the making a left turn, okay. It's, it's the turning lane. Do, does the placement of the vehicles on those exhibits, does that fairly and accurately depict how you usually merge from the two lanes into the left turn lane? That's correct. That's how you do it. That's correct. I don't have to, I don't move move over from one lane to the other, okay? I think all of them's the same. You can give me those. At this time, Your Honor, we'd offer into evidence defendants G, N, O, and H. No objection, Your Honor. Be received, showing you the plaintiff's exhibit number two. Is that representative of how you would normally proceed down West Beantown if you were heading to make a left turn onto Leonard Road? No, that would have been a, I'd have to be over here. I wouldn't be over there, okay? This mark, this goes straight out to the turning lane. You don't have to move from here to here, okay? I wouldn't have no business being over in the right lane. I travel it every day, so I wouldn't be over there, okay? You, you said you wouldn't have any business being over at, that is correct, unless I'm going into St. Charles, okay? I wouldn't be going into St. Charles. That's a parkway or whatever, right? But if you were going into St. Charles, you wouldn't ultimately be making a left turn onto Leonard Road. That is correct, right? Okay, I have no further questions. Cross, Mr. Quaid, you talked a little bit about what your ordinary practice is when you go down this roadway. Isn't it true that as you sit here today, you can't tell this jury that you did that day what you just said you ordinarily do, can you? What do you mean that's, I do that every day, but you can't say whether you did that or not on March 13th, 2006, can you? Yeah, yeah, yep, 
because that's the way I, I approach that intersection in that lane. So correct me if I'm wrong. I thought you testified that you have no independent recall recollection of what happened on March 13th, 2006. I don't, I don't. And you don't have any re recollection, recollection of there being an accident that day. I don't. And you don't have any recollection of seeing Mr. Urban's vehicle that day. No, I had no idea about this accident. I didn't find out this about this accident till I don't know when. I mean, it was, you know, the suit came case came up. So, so you do you recall what the movements of your truck were on March thirteenth, two thousand six? Where would I don't have no. I have no idea what what are you this is where I make my turn to go home that's if that's correct all right we will stop there that will conclude our Q&A practice